Ishburne Rococo to be a classical? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I just did it this afternoon and I'm not looking at my notes. The problem about doing two identical lectures is once in a while I think I've just said this. Um, no, that's important. Huh? You did mention the two people. No, no. Well, I asked you, but I wasn't sure whether I said it to you or I said it this afternoon. Um, because it was important that I tell you. Chippendale, you look at the yoke shaped press rail, you look at the pierced black, you look at the straight sides. That's typical Chippendale. The bottom depends on one of four inspirations. So these are three characteristics. Four, not inspiration, four design influences. One is French, which is Rococo. One is Chinese. One is Gothic. And the last one is neoclassical. And depending on which influence it is, depends on, I mean, this is French influence or Rococo. This is neoclassical. This is sort of Chinesey. Well, I'll show you Chinese. Here's Chinese. Here's Gothic, here's neoclassical, here's French. This is really extremely French. So French that it doesn't have the yoke-shaped crest rail. But we know this is a famous Chippendale chair. And here's another one. This one, famous because it was designed by Adam. Much, really atypical of Adam's style because it's so heavy. I'm showing you this to remind you if you're a very expensive, very expensive, very important client who wants a very elaborate armchair, Robert Adam isn't going to say, I don't do elaborate things. She's going to do you a fancy armchair. And the reason we know this is in France, well, this, nobody ever in France did a top like this. This tells you it's a Chippendale. This tells you, doesn't tell you necessarily that Thomas Chippendale made it, but this is only existing in Chippendale style. This, you might have a problem with. You look here, and it's English, and the Americans sometimes did that. You don't really tend to see an American piece this elaborate and this gilded. You also don't tend to see a French piece this heavy in proportion, and never with this kind of top. So sometimes a piece like this is either you memorize the piece, or you look at it and you try and analyze it so that if you saw something like it, you'd be able to figure out where it came from. Um, now this, if I showed you this whole page, what you would do is, well, bless you, this is most of it. This is what we identify as Hebel White. But this is a reminder that Hebel White did other styles than the style most identified with him. It's not like you're an original designer and you design one of this. He was making the furniture catalog. Furniture catalog means I'll make whatever you like of the currently popular style. So he made the style identified with him most. He made lots of those. Maybe he originated it. And the heart shape, oval shape acts were also heavy. Sheraton, once it came to Sheraton, they were straighter side, there was more classical ornament, a little more delicate in general. I don't know that you could say this is more delicate than this. Actually, this is the chair that I showed you back in the American images. Um, but this is most of what Sheraton did. And he would also do this. But for instance, if I wouldn't show you this drawing by itself and expect you to identify it as from Sheraton's book. You know what I mean? From the Sheraton drawing book. You couldn't unless you're examining the book. So I, if I showed you this all by itself, I'd expect you to say it was a Hebel White style. So can you tell us like a brief difference and similar, uh, similarities between all three of them? Between Hebel White and Sheraton? Yeah, Hebel White, Chippendale, Sheraton. Hebel okay. White, Chippendale, Sheraton, just like this but not necessarily American versus English. Have a white, chi okay. Chippendale first. American, there are a couple of characteristics in American Chippendale. Um, more likely, you'll have an American Chippendale, a cabriole leg left over from Queen Anne. We carried over the cabriole leg of Wall and Clawfoot. But of course, if it has other legs, then you can't tell. 
then you might look for other characteristics or not be sure. If it has large ears, very prominent ears, now this doesn't mean it's always American, or that all American chairs have what the syllogism, that this, this chair is, has big ears, you know what syllogism is, if you see something in one, you, inter you, you attribute it to all the others. This, this American chair has big ears, therefore all American chairs have big ears. No. This, but if it has big ears, it's likely to be an American chair. But you can't always tell. I will look at them and I'll say, like, as, as with the um, wing chairs, if it tends to be a little square and squatter, I will think that it's probably English, and much of the time it will be. But it's not a dead giveaway. Yes? Um, chair, I can't that's like those eggs coming out. Does that tell me that it's American? Oh, good yes. Another point. Yeah. That tells you, yes, that tells you it's New York. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, just related to our um, tracing book, so you had said that any images that you've shown in class. No, no, no. Any images from the textbook. You could, you from the textbook you couldn't use. Oh, we couldn't use images that you've shown in class. Well, I didn't want you to say, but Joel can only use four images from uh, um, from uh, uh, what is it? From the uh, art store. Um, okay, Heppelwhite, typical Heppelwhite. Heppelwhite and Sharon, I can't tell you English or American. They're doing the same thing. You can tell by how it's made, but we're not studying that, and we're not looking at the furniture. So you won't ask this kind of question to uh, the final. No. I won't ask you. I, I, could, I could show you this and say where might it have been made and you give me two answers. Oh. I could do that. So you have to give two answers though. Yeah, well, no, if in the case, the question would then be which are the possible places it might, I mean, if I gave you that question, I, I, it's not that I'd say where is this from and give you, no, I won't, I won't put an identification like this where there are two answers. Um, unless I made a mistake in, in putting it. But I might say, where might this have been made? And how would you tell the difference? You know what? I wouldn't ask you that question for this. I'd ask you that question for a wing chair. Um, oh my God. This again, this is a break from it. This, again, this I would look at and I'd say, well, I would guess it was Sheraton because it's got the oval inlays in a lighter wood. It tends to be a lighter scale piece. Who is associated with the sideboard? Heppelwhite. This is the, I would never show, this is to suggest that Sheraton's a little fancier than Heppelwhite. This is another room you should know. And just because you should know it because it's famous. This, I said, I will only put this on if I feel that the rest of the test is hard and I have to give you a giveaway because this is a very easy to recognize piece with no, well, it, you notice that I gave you the period of English Regency, I didn't give you a style because it has no particular style. These join versus turn. Decoration here is, this is, remember? Chip carving. The other kinds of decoration would be painting or split spindles. And I'm not showing you split spindles so when you cut this in half, these in half, and you put one on to look like a pile master. Here are split spindles on the cold cover. The gateway table and the Windsor chair are two things that were invented in England and very popular in America. You need to know these terms. The rocker, forget whether it's Boston or not. I mean, I happen to have photographed this one. But a rocking chair and the Hadley chest were invented in America. And the Hadley chest is a combination of the blanket chest on top and drawers at the bottom. And this is again chip carving. And you identify it by the three recessed panels also. And tall boys, whether American or English, both of these are American, um, the English would tend to have, in general, heavier legs. But all of them, four legs in the front in William and Mary, four legs in the front, two legs in the back and straight.